people are in deep trouble now. Murugan up to the ball, offers his pad, and that will be the New Zealanders' strategy. Still to score 100 runs in this innings. Murugan up to Murphy Swa, ball, and he sweeps, and that's his first run, and the 100th run of the New Zealand innings, coming in the 48th over of 213 minutes of batting for the loss of seven wickets. So New Zealand really struggling on the second day. Money's worth for those uh, spectators there. Very few of them, and as uh, play comes to an end 35 minutes after the schedule close, New Zealand in deep trouble there. The middle order really failing and the top order not hitting top gear and some splendid bowling there by the Sri Lankans holding the innings. 14 extras in 100 runs and New Zealand considered only 13 in a total that was almost four times more than what it is now. Varnavira was the chief offender but uh, his strike rate was so well, together with Muralidharan and the others not impressing too much, and New Zealand losing their seven wickets for the addition of 42 runs after a splendid start from Wright and Heartland. Splendid fielding also helped Sri Lanka get the advantage, and it promises to be another good day, and hope you enjoyed. Good night from me. Welcome to Highlights. It is another bright and sunny morning. One run added to the New Zealand total, so they resume at 101 for 7. Bradburn and Sua, the overnight batsmen, Sri Lanka having played themselves into a very strong position with some very purposeful bowling and equally good fielding. We pick up play in the first over. Bradburn is facing up to Julie Plianage. Good delivery. A very good first delivery from Lienage. Well taken there at Tilakaratna. At short leg. A brilliant catch. It was a very firmly hit. And that's the eighth New Zealand wicket falling with the total at 101. No addition to the total. That was only the second delivery of the morning. On the leg stump, Bradburn went for the flick. Hit it very hard, but straight to Tilakaratna. That's his third catch, and he's enjoying a very good match indeed. The second highest scorer in the Sri Lankan innings, and he is delighted. The new batsman in is Chris Pringle. Bold him. That's a beautiful delivery for Lienage, his fourth for the morning. And Chris Pringle is beaten. Sheer pace, a very bad stroke indeed. And losing the ninth wicket, New Zealand are now 101 for nine. So two wickets in the first over. And the last man in is Michael Owens. Lenige beats Sua once again. He bowled well this morning. A very confident appeal, but the umpire is not interested. That was a close decision, nevertheless. Murli Dharan to Owens. Played apishly, but uh, finds uh, adversary at mid on so New Zealand all out. And that is their lowest total against Sri Lanka, with the run added 102 all out in 11 test matches, and losing their last three wickets in just four overs in 15 minutes of batting. In fact, their innings was uh, over in 42 overs and Varnavira and Muralidharan together with Lienge, excellent figures. The first two, their best ever performances. Four Sri Lankans and three New Zealanders had career best performances yesterday. 292 runs behind on the first innings. Made to follow on, Heartland faces up to Lienge. The wicket slowing down a bit. Botch Tilakaratna. He is really enjoying a marvellous match here at the SSC. 
Once again, very good, quick reflexes. He found Hartland coming out after playing that stroke. Good stroke there. Timed it well. On the onside. Barnavira after it. But that's the first boundary for Hartland. New Zealand expected to put up a much more polished performance if they are to be in this game. Guru Singer to Hartland. The spinners uh, expected to take over during the afternoon. Right very nearly bowled on that occasion. A good delivery from Asanka Gurusinghe, almost on the block hole, just outside the off stump. And John Wright very clearly beaten on that occasion. Edged it past third slip. So that's the second boundary for Hartland. There's no third man. Hartland was really fishing for that one. Pitched outside his off stump and moving further away. So the New Zealand batsmen looking for some runs. They don't want to be tied down by the Sri Lankan bowlers. Gursing around the wicket. Straying down the leg side. Very well turned away. Wide of fine leg. In fact, turned very fine. And that's four. So that's the third boundary for Hartland. Gursing into him, pulled it away, but straight to Murli Dharan at square leg. So he takes the catch and uh, that's the first to get down in the New Zealand second innings. With the total on 23. Hartland out for 21. Batted for 38 minutes and hit three boundaries. Short, he hit it, he couldn't control it. It was in the air. And a very well judged catch from Mutaya Murlidharan. So Sri Lanka getting the breakthrough. And quite a good one at that. The new batsman in is Andrew Jones. Here's Varnavira, the top wicket taker in the first innings. Guru Singer Jones. Played it well. Wide of uh, Arjun Ramtunga down to third man. No stopping that one. So that's the first boundary for Andrew Jones. That ball came in, but uh, right picked the line very well. Guru Singh, a reasonably good job with the new ball. And move that one in, so some consolation for him. In the air, and Tilakaratna is there. He's gone. That's the second wicket down. And what a good one at that. New Zealand, two wickets down for 30. Jones was at the wicket for just 15 minutes. And that's the fourth catch in the match for Hashan Tilakaratna. And he is delighted. So the New Zealand captain coming in. A much polished performance expected of him. He is yet to impress, but a marvellous record for him. Takes strike from Varnavila. A very confident start. A risk run, and that's five runs. So he starts off in great style. Maybe an indication of things to come. Right, very watchful, and Murlidharan getting the ball to turn, but a slow turn that time. Right, having a long reach, the ball dropping in front of Mahanam at first slip. So, good signs here. Murli Dharan not afraid to give that ball a lot of air. And Crow just swings him. He timed it very well. And that's a good stroke from Martin Crow. And that's six. A pretty confident stroke there from the New Zealand captain. That ball came back on him. And could do well to use his feet to the spinners. Barnavira into Crow. Oh, played that one very well. A long chase there for Murli and he won't get to it. And a good shot from Martin Crow. 
Once again, he picked that up very well, moving inside the line. Wait for the umpire. That was four. So finally, Martin Crow playing some glorious strokes in the outfield, quite right. And that one, he really launched himself into that very well struck his fifth boundary. Gursing in the fielder. And Martin Crow is not impressed. We see the action replay. Gursinga is the fielder. And he thinks that the ball bounced in front of uh, Gursinga. Steadfastly not moving, staying his ground. The umpire is conferring. Initially, umpire Anandapa gave him out. And uh, subsequently, he consulted the leg umpire who ruled that the ball did hit the ground before Gursinga took it. So that's another good stroke there from the New Zealand captain and drama here at the SSC. Crow on the attack, another good stroke there. So he'll be hitting plenty of those strokes and the ball very quickly into the boundary and his 50 coming up in only 66 minutes of batting. The first big score he made on this tour. Excellent support there from John Wright. He's batted for a long time. New Zealand went in for lunch at uh, 75 for 2 in 21 overs. The partnership now really prospering. Made room that time and struck it well through cover. So Crow is playing his strokes and not afraid to get to the pitch of that ball. Delightful stroke play. And gives... Uh, Sri Lankan bowlers, a lot of worries here at the moment. Garmini Vikram Singh thought Crow got a touch. And the Sri Lankans have been appealing quite vehemently and understandably Crow is very amused. That was another glorious stroke. He got right to the pitch of that one and not afraid to hit that ball whenever it's there to be hit and that's his third six so unnecessary into crow now and once again launching himself a long hit there six more that's his fourth stroke over the boundary so the New Zealand captain well on its way and now John Wright also gets into the act very nearly caught on that occasion came out of his crease to a ball that was pitched up to him didn't quite hit it was in the air for a long time Muralidharan giving a very big try he should have held on to that one nevertheless Arnusari dropping short and very well played through cover by Crow on the back foot. Arvind De Silva, the fielder, he did well to stop that ball from rolling over. Three runs to Martin Crow. The crowd treated to some excellent batting and the 100 up in 124 minutes, the 150 in 169 minutes, the partnership really looking threatening. Arvind De Silva, once again, a big attempt and Crow really enjoying this. That was his century coming up in 143 minutes of batting, including 10 boundaries and four sixes and a five. Once again, stroked away on the offside. And Martin Crow in great style. T approaching on the third day. This is the last over. Muralidharan to Martin Crow did not get hold of that one. Hashan Tilakaratna takes the catch. And that's the third wicket down with a total on 189 and John Wright not out on 49 at the non-striker's end batted for 210 minutes but the important wicket of Martin Crow on that occasion he didn't quite get to the pitch of that one and first Tilakaratna took evasive action but eyes always on the ball it was ballooning in there and finally the simplest of catches for the Sri Lankan who has had most of the catching in that area so that was the tea time total and New Zealand 
in a dangerous position at this stage as the new batsman Rutherford comes in together with John Wright. Wright on 49, batted for a long time, Varnavira into him. Murli on the fielder, he won't get to it. Apish stroke there, wide of gully. Rutherford steers uh, Varnavira. Anvasari gives chase. And John Wright having completed a fine half century. Batted for 214 minutes now. Obviously, and Mahanama takes a good catch. That was excellent reflexes. Wright lost concentration momentarily. Hit five boundaries and batted for 225 minutes. 196 to four the total. Muraladharan in his 15th over. That was a good strike there. Wright was looking dangerous. He had batted for a long time. And a full stretch catch from Roshan Mahanama brings in Chris Harris to the wicket. So, Tilkaratna really going after everything, probably off the pad, but uh, Tilkaratna lunging at it, couldn't really hold on to that one. Rutherford launching himself, so the New Zealanders have decided to go after the bowling whenever it's pitched up, and the crowd being treated to some excellent batsmanship. Once again, Rutherford coming forward, driving. So he is showing why he is such an accomplished batsman. He is one of the informed batsmen for New Zealand. The 200 up in 242 minutes of batting in the 57th over. Murudharan to Rutherford. Oh, he drove it well, but excellently fielded there by Arvind De Silva at mid-off. So the Sri Lankans supporting the bowlers very well on the field. And that's very good cricket bring themselves into a very strong position. New Zealand still to avert the follow-on. 292 runs behind on the first innings. Murlidharan to Harris. Swept it well and he middled it very well indeed. Backward of square, four runs. John and the Varnavira, the two, two, two of them has been Bowling very well into Rutherford. Apishli taken there by Sanat Jasuriya, substituting at the backward short leg. That was a good catch. And Rutherford batted for 57 minutes, hit 1 6 and 3 boundaries. 240 for 5 in the 65th over. A very comfortable catch in the end for Sanat Jasuriya. Adam Parore, the new batsman, in. So Anurusiri, not much success for him in this match. Denigay to Parore. There's no fielder at third man, so that's the 250 up for New Zealand in the 68 over of 292 minutes of batting. Grant Bradburn did not impress with the bat on the first innings. So New Zealand playing for the close of play. With just four wickets standing in the second innings, Sri Lanka will be looking to polish off the New Zealand tail for the second time. Harold is stroking Murli Dharan on the offside on that occasion. The wicket not having too many dangers, it has slowed down considerably. Except for Martin Crowe and John Wright, none of the others really did not impress. That stumps on the third day. Still 15 runs needed to make Sri Lanka bat again. And some splendid bowling and some very enthusiastic fielding bringing New Zealand 
a lot of problems except for Martin Crowe. He and John Wright really played some marvellous cricket in the afternoon session which brought on 114 runs in 28 overs. But once again, Leonige not impressing, but Varnavira and Muralidharan doing the damage with Gurusinghe and Anurusuri supporting. Martin Crowe, he and John Wright really played some marvellous cricket in the afternoon session which brought on 114 runs in 28 overs. But once again, Leonige not impressing, but Varnavira and Muralidharan doing the damage with Gurusinghe and Anurusuri supporting them. But a splendid 159 run partnership for the third wicket between Crow and Wright really putting New Zealand on the right track but they faltered thereafter in the face of some excellent catching especially close to the wicket. So Sri Lanka will be looking to end this match pretty quickly. Hope you enjoyed and join us tomorrow for more action. Yep. Neatly turned off with the single. Rana single cannot prevent it. And that's uh, Adam Parore, a splendid knock from him, the half century, his maiden half century coming in the fifth test match. Gursing into Parore, edges it and uh, Mahanamit is dropping it at second slip. So Parore survives just after his half century. Could have been a second wicket for Gursinga. A good attempt but uh, should have really held on to that one. Lunch, New Zealand 351 for 9 in 113 overs, 74 runs added in 29 overs in the first session. Cursing into Parore. Didn't know much about that one. The ball coming back slightly into the right hand. Oh, that was a nice stroke there through cover. He timed that one well. From the better fielders, Muralidharan couldn't get to that one. Over pitch and Parori has shown what a good driver of the ball he is. Turned away and Tilakaratni is there. He's taken that catch. That's the fourth wicket for Muralidharan. And New Zealand are all out with a total at 361. 419 for batting and 119 overs. Parore having hit 50 runs, batted for 224 minutes and hit 6 boundaries. Delacarton taking his 7th catch of the match. And what a splendid performance it has been. So, 69 runs on and Sri Lanka needing just 70 runs for victory. Delacarton joins a select band of 2 cricketers. Greg Chappell of Australia and Jajuendra Singh of India who have taken seven catches in a test match. And there is this total. A good resolute batting performance from Parode bringing up the third half century of the New Zealand second innings. And Pringle giving him a very good support this morning. So are the only batsmen failing to score in the New Zealand second innings. But Muralidharan bowled exceptionally well. His best ever test figures, four for 134. Well supported by Varnavira and Anurusari with two wickets each. The umpires walking out to the middle and a big crowd, a lot of people gathered here as Mahanama and Hathuru Singha. Both must be very confident opening this Sri Lankan innings. 70 runs needed. Or neatly turned away over Wens, that will be four. So Mahanama off to a very good start. Eighty-five minutes of batting before tea for Sri Lanka. Turned away once again. This time through slip and gully. Four more. So boundaries in successive balls in the first over for Mahanama. Pringle to Hathur Singha. He's Favourite stroke there, and he's off the mark with the boundary. Owens to Mahanamo. 
pretty good delivery there from Owens on that particular occasion. And equally well played by Mahanamak. Bradburn was there. Martin Coe was not on the field when New Zealand came out. Jones leading them instead. Dion Nash substituting for Martin Crow. Once again, well struck by Mahanama. He's batting absolutely brilliantly using very good touch. Two consecutive centuries of this New Zealand attack and that's Harris at slip. Mahanama turns to Sua, the first ball in change, one of his favourite strokes. May not run to the boundary. Substitute uh, Justin Vaughan doing the fielding. The Sri Lanka will on its way to record the third test victory in 42 test matches. Owens into Mahanama. Oh, he turned it well and he timed it too. Wide of Sua, no stopping that one back in the square. And that's Mahanama's fourth boundary. Oh, he's gone and the Parore takes the sixth victim of the match and the fifth wicket for Michael Owens of the match. Battled for just 35 minutes Mahanama and scored 29 runs. Sri Lanka 36 for one in the seventh over. The new batsman in is Asanka Gurusinghe. Hathur Singh made his test debut against New Zealand last year. Sua into him. No ball and very well struck through the covers. Hathur Singh also making very good use of some much needed batting practice. And Gurusinghe plays that one very well. Back to the point. That's his first boundary. Approaching a historic first win against New Zealand. There it's achieved. And it's all over with uh, around 20 minutes remaining for tea. And the game finally won by Sri Lanka, which is...